This screencast is going to be about resonance and bond enthalpy. Uh, sometimes when you draw a Lewis structure, there is an equally likely chance that um, you could draw a slightly different one th um, that would match all the requirements. And this is illustrated in this diagram that I have here. Um, in the first Lewis structure, you have NO3 with a minus 1 charge. And you can see that you have a lower left single bond, a lower right single bond, and then an upper double bond. It is just as likely to form the double bond on the upper center bond as it is on any of the other positions. So in this central one, they have relocated the double bond to the left, and then they have relocated the double bond to the right. What really happens in resonance is this. You have an equally likely chance that... Um, the you could relocate a feature in a different spot in the Lewis structure. So what really happens is you have a blend of all the Lewis structure potentials, and that is called resonance. So no one of these is formed you form, um, you, it's kind of like an average. You form some of all of them, and so it is assumed that all of them are possible, and you have resonance. Bond enthalpy is the heat for um, any particular bond, and so we are going to focus on the heat for the whole reaction by looking at um, the bonds that are broken and the bonds that are formed. The values that you're going to be using are in table 8.4 in your text, and I do not recall the exact page number, and sometimes that changes. But you can look for um, bond enthalpies listed in a text source or online. And you will have different values, for instance, if you have a carbon-carbon single bond or a carbon double bond carbon, or even a carbon triple bond they would have a different delta H or bond enthalpy. You also will have bond enthalpies for any other combination of two elements. So you need to look those values up. You will never be expected to memorize them, but you will need to use them. To solve the bond enthalpy for a reaction like this, you need to um, identify what is broken and formed. Broken and formed. Okay, so that would be the left to the right. You need to then look up the delta H values and then you're going to solve. You are going to find the delta H for this reaction by considering the bonds broken minus all the bonds formed. So we need to find the sum of all the broken and the sum of all the formed, and that would be the, de the delta H for the entire reaction. Okay, first step. Let's figure out what is different from left to right. So we're going to look at the arrow or the yield sign as our dividing line, and we need to look at the left side of the arrow and the right side of the arrow and figure out what's different. And as you look at this molecule, on the left side we have a CH4, and on the right side we have a CH3Cl. So there is something different there. We have um, a C H single bond that seems to have gone and changed and become a CCL. We also on the left have this chlorine chlorine group and on the right we have a hydrogen chlorine group. So what you're doing is you're looking left to right to figure out what is broken and formed. Now we started with these so these are going to be broken and these would be formed because we're moving left to right, okay? I've provided you with a list here on the left of the different bonds involved and what their enthalpies are, and they are measured in kilojoules per mole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add up the broken and add up the formed and subtract them. So we have 413 and the CLCL is 242 
and then we will have our 328 and our 431 and we will simplify and when we subtract and do all the addition sorry this should be an addition when we do all the math we're going to get a value of negative 104 kilojoules per mole okay what this tells me because this is negative if you remember back to thermochemistry if you have a negative delta H that means that the energy is being given off and it would be exothermic that this reaction would actually produce heat to go forward um, another thing to keep in mind is if we happen to have two of this entire molecule here we and we wanted to break both of the bonds we would have to multiply down here by whatever factor of, of the coefficients I'm showing you this problem for two reasons uh, the first is that they are approaching this um, problem and they're going to take apart every single bond on the left side and then put together every single bond on the right which is a very easy way not to miss anything so you can add up every single bond in your reactant side and every single bond in your product side and subtract them the other thing that I wanted to show you is that there are coefficients here that have to be included now when I was reviewing this problem in my head um, I noticed that their number is incorrect here this should be 360 and they sort of use it but they um, they don't go about a good job about that so I'm going to actually move it over here to the side so it doesn't interfere in our problem so what I want you to look at is I want you to consider that each and every bond on the left are going to be broken and you can see that there is one two three four five um, carbon hydrogen bonds so that is our five carbon hydrogens there is um, one carbon carbon in the center there is this carbon oxygen that's 360 that's the one I fixed and then there's a oxygen hydrogen which is the 463 so those in underlined in red are all on the reactant side and we have three O2s so that would be also right there so those are all our reactants the products if you look here we have C double bond O twice but we also have a coefficient of 2 so that would give us a total value of 4 4 and they've included this negative instead of subtracting the products and the reactants they've just applied the negative to each part so 4 times a negative 743 um, you have then two hydrogen oxygens but remember you have three of them so that gives us six so six times again negative 463 when you do the math and you work through it you get an um, an overall value for the delta H for the bond enthalpy of negative 1020 kilojoules per mole remember this negative one is the same as saying one over moles so when you look at your units it's kilojoules per mole